Working 9 to 5 is outdated. Well, it's not, but things have changed and the world is slowly moving past the 9 to 5 routine into entrepreneurship, which is increasingly becoming popular. People with an entrepreneurial spirit are choosing to venture into the world of self-employment where creativity, innovation, out-of-the-box thinking and autonomy reign supreme. So I got employed immediately after I graduated and it was not my profession like what I had studied. It was an account management job of a portfolio of debt seven months into the, the job. I felt like I wanted to be out there in the community, in the environment, to connect with people. At that particular point, I sort of started just toying around with several ideas and I had an idea for a fashion event. So during my free time, I used to do a lot of research about what it takes to host a fashion event or an event in general in Nairobi, ETC. And I put that down around the ninth month in the formal employment. I think Muito, Amamvuto, ilikuwa imekuwa too much. It was like really bugging me to just like, why don't you go out there and explore? And I was very young and I was like, I have nothing to lose. And so one afternoon I just quit. And so at that particular point now I had so much time to implement the idea that I had. And on weekends, on Saturdays, I used to walk around Nairobi, let's say the venue spaces around Westlands or hotels. I'm like, hi, how much does it cost to rent out your space for a day A to C? And it was quite a huge amount back then. And so I realized I'm not going to be able to afford to implement this, um, this idea without having partners. Then I learned of Michael Joseph Center at that time, it's at Safaricom. My work now became writing emails. Um, they responded that um, they've seen my request and they'd be okay coming on board to support ATC. Getting the support from Michael Joseph Center meant I had a venue, I had on ground staff like inside the hall. I had seats, I had sound, I had everything. So I had a business partner, an implementer partner for that idea. Her name is Nora. And so we decided you're going to sell space, exhibit a space. So the event was known as Fashion Bloggers Runway Show back in 2016. It was such a feel good type of event. And we approached a lot of uh, top notch fashion brands or personalities or whatever and we were selling exhibitor space, the four by two tables. And then we had ticket sales as well for the fashion event. And that's how we made money from the event itself. But ideally, we didn't have money to start the event, literally. So the event paid itself in terms of paying for the models, paying for um, extra help for the people who are helping around entertainment. Even with the entrepreneurial spirit, your business is still your job and needs more than resources to succeed. Initially, we were just winging it. But then immediately after the fashion event, I started hosting women empowerment events. But my focus was more young women, especially under 25, under 30. Initially, we were just using the element of storytelling, bringing personalities to share their story, their journey, especially personalities we felt um, who are more authentic in who they are and the journey they've been through. After doing storytelling for quite a while, I was asking myself what more. And so we started looking towards the element of uh, capacity building. Our focus after 2020 became more about economic empowerment for young women in business. And so elements of trainings, especially things like digital media, digital skills that they can use for their business became a key thing. So the challenge became now being able to do the events the same way. And luckily within this time frame, we were able to compete for a grant and got support from the USA, DLE and KU to implement a program known as Twin One program. It's a socioeconomic empowerment program that uh, 
was training 270 female entrepreneurs from Mombasa. And so with the sort of trajectory and growth and how we've been moving, I think since 2020 during the pandemic, now we realize the core thing or the bigger picture that we want to focus on is building communities, um, especially for young women entrepreneurs, building their capacity and uh, doing that even in more areas where it doesn't seem possible or where they don't get a lot of these opportunities. As with any business, there are always challenges. I would say nurturing and growing a team. So initially when I started, I was a one person team. That's why again, I never had a lot of expenses around me. So it was more about working smart. But then you get to a point you realize for you to get to where you want to be, you can't do it alone and you can't be waiting for freebies. You need people on your side. So the teamwork element, um, getting the right people. Another challenge I think I faced is, I would say evolving. When we were like a one woman show initially, and we are meant to be doing everything, we missed out on a huge part of telling our stories very well because we've done so much since 2016 to date. Not only hosting events at Safaricom, we've given talks to girls' high schools. Um, we've been part of career days. We've done events in Tanzania as well. But I always look at it as elements where we missed out to tell our stories well so that we stay afloat with social media and digital media as as it keeps coming with full swing there's always something happening entrepreneurship sounds like an easy ride but it's not therefore before venturing into it one needs to be ready for the ups and downs one honest thing i believe is entrepreneurship is not a solution to the high rate of unemployment also because it takes a lot from you as a 22 year old, to me, I felt like I have nothing to lose. Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? If the event fails, we go back and look for another job or whatever. And so entrepreneurship takes a lot of risks. If we look at it as a solution to the unemployment, then people who go in and within year one, year two, they're not seeing this giving them the revenue they expected or the life lifestyle they hoped for they will give up and so they'll be back again to the same cycle of like no i want something stable and so i think my advice to anyone who watches this and they have a passion or a desire to do something for themselves is what's the worst that can happen if you follow that crazy dream or desire you have for yourself because you you won't know unless you try